dark. Um, it's dark, huh? Sorry, I got no light. Um, yeah, so I'm awake. That's a good thing. Um, I went to sleep, which was the bad thing. So, uh, somebody hit me over the head and half my gas is gone. Uh, they popped one of the uh, gas tanks and they drained the fuel and I guess uh, they didn't either know that there was a second tank or, you know, maybe they couldn't carry that much. I don't know. But uh, now I have half the gas, and I thought my migraine was bad. Uh, and she's awake and alive. And so I didn't get anything done yesterday. Uh, and the battery ran out, so I had to charge the generator. And... Um, It's a brand new day. Uh, I have more to say, but I just wanted to be awake, and so I am focusing on this for a minute, and then uh, waiting for the sun to rise so that the next day can commence with now a migraine plus a possible concussion. Ow. And a dog that won't stop biting me. Perfect. All right, good morning. Um, so I'm up, I'm awake. Uh, I still have a terrible migraine and now I have whatever's going on. Uh, I don't know if I have a concussion or not, but I didn't want to take any chances. And so I uh, tried to keep myself awake last night, but I fell asleep. So the good news is I woke up, okay. Uh, everything's wet because it rained a lot yesterday and I don't have anywhere I can sit so I have to hold this camera and as you can tell I'm getting super cranky and bitchy. The only good news is I can't get censored for my profanity or demonetized. <laughs> okay so just to recap uh, yesterday uh, somebody popped uh, punched a hole in one of my uh, car and my gas tank uh, they took out half, so now I am, uh, unfortunately they took out the full half. Uh, I don't even know if they filled up bottles or they just punched it and it ran to the ground because it stinks over there. Uh, the bad news is the tank they left is the one I already have miles on. And it's the one with the bad gauge, so I don't even know 100% how much I have. Uh, but whatever it is, I'm now at less than half than my original plan. So we will be conserving even more, and I'm going to take it as a sign if people are stealing gas that there's something else going on. The gas stations aren't open. Uh, I still don't have any definitive explanation for things that are going on. Uh, you know, I think people are starting to get things are going on, even though I've been completely checked out. Yesterday, somebody was driving almost all morning on an ATV. I don't know if they were looking for somebody. Uh, I didn't even stop them. I just was, you know, inside trying to deal with the head. Okay, so here's uh, here's what I wanted to cover today. Uh, right now I'm out of produce, but on the ground, uh, if you can see all this, can you see? Because it's, uh, it's raining so much. Uh, there are tons and tons of plants, and I only know of one, maybe two, that I can eat. So my goal today is to uh, kind of collect them and see what I can do about uh, deciding what I can eat. 
Uh, the second thing is I just wanted to talk about yesterday in that oh, it's hard for me to stand. I don't feel good. Um, maybe that chair is dry. So uh, I wanted to talk about what happened. Part of the chair is dry. Uh, so let's see if I can even put this here so you don't have to see me jiggling. All right, so uh, one of the things I've learned by living in the dirt is that there is a uh, state of constant vigilance that is required from nature. Uh, the weather, uh, right now, you know, I can't look up the weather report, and as much as I've, time as I've spent in New Mexico, it keeps changing. Like, for this time of year, we're not supposed to have monsoons. We're supposed to be hot and dry, and then by mid-July, the monsoons. So I'm pretty sure, I think this is what, day six-ish? So we're still on the front end of uh, July, I'm pretty sure. And so, um, this hasn't been a priority. <laughs> uh, so this is unusual, uh, and I'm out of produce, but so I have all these green plants. I, I don't know which ones I can eat. So today my goal is to kind of sort that out uh, and sort and conserve, you know, my other food. Plus, it's hard to not. I was low on produce when this happened anyways. I hadn't been to the store for a while because it's so far away. I don't drive very often. So you never know when that last pickup, fill up is going to be. Uh, the other thing, you know, I was talking about is nature is, uh, I'm not afraid of nature, but I've learned I have to be disciplined and vigilant 24-7, 365. What I'm not disciplined about, but will be now, are people. You know, I told you, I, you know, to me, the, the psychology is about after about three days, uh, you know, the, the, in the cities, who knows what's going on there, but you know, with people who don't think ahead, within three days, nine meals, they're out of food. And once people are hungry, they start acting wildly irrationally. But up here, you know, everybody has to have some level of supply, so you don't see that kind of panic right at the front end. But, uh, you know, what I know about people is that it's really civilization, you know, that keeps their behavior semi-structured. Uh, and, and I'm assuming now that uh, we are in the breaking down process and there's nobody to call, there's nobody to come by, and all those protections that we have implied in our culture and our civilization, uh, I can assume now are gone. And so the vigilance of 24-7, 365 now needs to include humans. Uh, even the ones that you can't see that come up uh, from the back, I guess. I don't even know what happened. Um, I know my boy dog didn't hear anything so that's you know a bummer he can hear the cars but he doesn't seem to react to people which has been a thing for the whole time I've been here so uh you know that's that's a real thing uh and so you know now my options have shrunk and uh you know what's happening this morning is real life. She pooped on the carpet. I don't, she's never gone inside, so I'm assuming she just didn't get finished because I didn't take her out long enough yesterday because it was raining all afternoon and evening, so we weren't out very long. And um, <laughs> I stepped in it on the my slipper. That's most of it washed off. Uh, now my carpets are all full of poop, and, uh, and they're really nasty anyways, but uh, I was waiting to clean them or just get rid of them till her uh, inside outside was navigated and she really hasn't been going inside except for yesterday which is probably my fault and uh, so many dogs and cats have gone on that carpet in the last few months that it's considered outside I think by anybody who has a nose but you know these are things I don't want to deal with I don't want to be cleaning poop off my carpet and my shoes when I don't feel good so here's the other thing that's happening like I said I'm getting bitchy and short-tempered I'm snapping at her I'm snapping at freedom I'm snapping at anybody that's walking around and the thought that popped into my head is all she wants to do is play she wants to play with me she wants to play with freedom she wants to play with the other dogs 
nobody here wants to play. None of the dogs like to play. I am, uh, like I said, I'm hyper-focused on uh, getting stuff done, and I've been, when I get in pain, I get super bitchy and short-tempered, and so I'm snapping at her, and it just flashed this morning. Uh, like, this is how you lose your childhood. You know, and my other dog, Freedom, was four months-ish when his sibling got taken away uh, when he was at the shelter. And I was told by people working at the shelter, that's when he made the psychological shift and he got weird. Uh, and I was looking at her as she's, you know, recoiling from me because I was barking and not in her language in mine. <laughs> And uh, I'm like, I got, I don't want to damage her and make her weird like freedom, you know, where she's just retreats and can't be a puppy. But like, who has time to play? I can't think about playing. And I was thinking about all the children who have their childhood robbed because when you're when the adults right are all in a constant state of fear and there's so much tension and stress they're certainly not having i mean they're picking all that up and they may act out in a good way and they may act out in a bad way or they may just shut down and withdraw they're having the same nervous system responses that we are uh, and they're probably being traumatized and trauma breaks you i mean it can make you but it also can break you and a lot of that stuff doesn't resolve it rewires like freedom you know he's had nothing to be afraid of for 10 plus years we do the same thing every day and he still is fearful like oh my gosh you know we're getting in the car going somewhere and he's shaking and I'm like we've gotten in the car for 10 years nothing bad has ever happened to you and he's still like that and I don't want that for her I don't want that for anybody and I don't want to cry because then that makes my head hurt so I'm just, uh, that's my plan for the day then, is I'm going to go around and see what's on the ground and see if I can start collecting uh, stuff to eat because uh, I can also feel, you know, when I'm not getting anything fresh or real or alive, it, I don't feel as good either. So it's ironic. I am surrounded by green things and I have no idea what I can eat because when the internet was up and I could look, the ground was dead. It had been dry for months and months and months. There was nothing growing. Now I am surrounded by things that are growing and I have no way to identify them. I have a couple books, but it's, you know, everything is so specific to the location that you're at. And, you know, I see things that kind of look like something I can eat, but there is a slight variation in the leaf. Uh, so I guess I'll take pictures. So if they find my body in this tape, you'll know that that was poisonous. I, I always remember that Into the Wild uh, story. I don't remember his real name, but Alexander Supertramp. He wanted to live free and be wild. And he went to Alaska and he ate some plant that had just the slightest deviation from the safe plant. He ate the poisonous plant and he died. His body, his body wouldn't digest food. And that's my fear now is I'm going to eat one thing that's poisonous because I didn't know. And I took a t chance. Oh God, I miss grocery stores so bad. And it's only been, well, I haven't been to the grocery store for a couple weeks, but, uh, I haven't been aware how much, uh, I miss what uh, we just took for granted. You know, I'm surrounded by abundance, and I have no idea, other than the purslane and the pine trees, what I can eat. <laughs> Fuck. All right, so that's, uh, that's this morning. I am obviously going to be cleaning poop off the carpet because that's how I intended to spend my day today. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, my old business cards that I don't need anymore. I'm going to put numbers on the back, and I'm going to put them with the plant because, you know, once upon a time, I would have asked the YouTube audience to help me. I can't do that now, but it doesn't hurt to have a record, right? Oh, what are you doing? Look at this. Well, she may, I may not be able to play, but she's really good at entertaining herself. <laughs> Go Haven. 
Okay, so this is number one. Uh, there's a lot of this stuff growing. Can you see that? Oh, the light is terrible. All right, so uh, this is the flower it makes. It's a beautiful flower. Uh, this is the the seed. There's the shape. There's the uh, the shape of the leaf itself. Uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, two. Uh, I think this is tumbleweed. Uh, it's soft. You can eat tumbleweed uh, in its. Uh, you can eat tumbleweed when it's like this. It's not tasty, but if it's a, it's a survival food. Uh, and then what it does is it becomes uh, obviously sharp and brittle. And the tap root, the tap root. Uh, I didn't pull it up by the root, but it has a tap root, and that uh, lifts up and runs away. Uh, so that's number two is what I think is tumbleweed. Uh, this one I forgot to show you. This, if you can see that, is a big plant. Uh, this I recognize uh, from Truth or Consequences. It has, uh, it has segments on its root, and it is, uh, I don't remember its uh, official name, but it's known as Cowboy, I mean, Mormon Tea. And it has, it's part of the ephedra uh, plant. And you can dry the, these and make a tea out of them that has a stimulant to it. So my plan is to use this and this to make tea when my coffee runs out. All right, so number three. Uh, what's interesting about three and four is they have the their roots look the same? Can you see that? The root looks the same. This is three. Uh, I was told this plant number four uh, that looks a lot like a carrot, a carrot top. If you can see that, I don't know. The sun is bad. I was told you could eat the root that's like a carrot, but it looks exactly like this plant. Can you see that one? Uh, I don't know what it is. You can see this one has a very different leaf pattern to it. Uh, but the roots, the roots look exactly the same. So this one is four. This one is three. This one is very pungent. You can, it has a really strong smell to it. And it isn't a good smell. So I don't know what this one is, but I'm wondering if you can eat the roots because they look the same. I don't know. Okay, so this one is number five. This is the, the leaf itself. And this is uh, what the plant looks like. Uh, but you can see that it looks the same as number six, right? So this one is, this is six, and that's the leaf itself. But it has uh, more spikes to the leaf than this one, even though it looks the same. So this one is five. Uh, so this one is six, looks spikier. This is seven. This leaf looks the same to me as this one, right? So here's the leaves all next to each other. So that is five six, seven, but then this plant looks a little bit different. This has a much wider base to it. So, I mean, are these all the same? I have no idea. All right, so this is number eight. Uh, this is the one I started with thinking it was lambs 
quarter, but I think lamb's quarter has more spiky. But because it has these two, like my the person who told me it looks like a goat head, so that those two. So this is what the plant looks like. You see that? It kind of grows like that. Here's a bigger one. Uh, I've eaten this once, and I was okay, but I'm not... This one is the most tender and less, least hairy. So I don't know, is number eight edible? Uh, number nine looks uh, a little bit more like lamb's quarter in the spikiness. See, it has the two head, and that's, you know, the plant looks the same. So here is nine, and here are... You can see how all these things look the same. So this is nine, but here are the other leaves, right? They all look the same to me. Am I crazy? All right, this one has these big spikes on it. So I don't know what that one is. But there's a lot of that growing. So that will be number 10. This one looks to me like dandelion. So this is 11. But no flowers have come out. It looked like mustard too. But all of these have these kinds of leaves. And all the leaves are different. This, I don't know what this is. It's like an invasive species. This is the one that brings the evil beetles that eat everything I have. This one is really interesting, but I have no idea what it is. It just, you know, it sits up like that. So I don't know what this one is. Can you see that better? All right, so 10 uh, is this one with the spikes on it. 11 is the one that looks like dandelion, but it doesn't have yellow flowers. Twelve uh, is the one that's the evil noxious weed that grows everywhere. Thirteen is this interesting kind of, I don't know what this is. And fourteen, this is purslane. Can you see that? This is growing, uh, you can tell by those, can you see those little leaves? They're, it's... It's delicate, but it's, can you see that? It's a little like clover. Uh, that has the most vitamin A, uh, I don't know of all plants, but more than kale. So this is a very good source of vitamin A. All of this stuff though, uh, you should steam or cook because you don't know uh, if it's good or not. But you can see how there's quite a bounty if I knew what I could eat. I wish I had a way of knowing what I could eat. And that's, uh, and that's, and that's not even all of it. Uh, there's way more plants out there. Whoops. Uh, there's a lot more plants out there. I just don't, uh, I don't know what's edible or what's not. And what drives me crazy is how tiny variations there are in the leaves. I wish I could ask somebody, uh, because it's YouTube, if this was going on YouTube, because uh, people would give me comments about what I should have done. Uh, and I actually did go to a forest, uh, food forest workshop, and I asked specifically about local plants. Uh, and he told me, the guy who's been up here 30 years told me there's nobody up here, even though the Native Americans have lived up here for hundreds of years. There's nobody left who knows what all the plants are. And he gave me the written list, but I don't have pictures. <sighs> Are you still biting me? You're still biting me, dog. Oh, biting, biting, biting. Do you want to say hi? Do you want to say hi for posterity? This is my puppy. 